Hey, Psalms chapter 85. Make sure you don't get no coronavirus where you have protection. I mean, we're doing this on computer, so we don't want no computer viruses, do we? Psalms 85. You know, the basic fact is you're not trusting in God. If God wants you to get the core of virus, do you think this is going to protect you from God? I've seen people today at Walmart in Ormond Beach, Florida. I've seen them today. They have their mask. They're wearing their mask like this. I'll tell you what will protect you. Praying to God. Seeking God. Seeking out the word of God and studying. That's what will protect you. Psalms 85. To the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. The same description that we did in Psalms 84. The Lord has been favorable unto thy land. All right, don't go. No, it's not American. Not American soil from purple mountain to purple mountain, whatever that nonsense. <coughs> Excuse me. At the writing of this, there is no America. It's the nation of Israel. It's the land of Cana that God gave to the Israelites. That the Israelites failed in disobeying God. They haven't got it all yet. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Now we're going to look at this psalm in a moment. It's going to be, oh, it's going to sound like Ezra, Nehemiah. What is it? It said Jacob. Captivity of Jacob. Yeah, there was a captivity, Babylonian captivity. And it could sound like it. And it could sound like maybe the psalm is written in the time of uh, uh, Ezekiel. But let's look at Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, and see maybe why it says of Jacob. Could it use Israel? J uh, Isaiah, excuse me, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is an event of the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Pay attention to the words that we just read out of Jeremiah as we look at the words of this song. I believe that this psalm, and you don't have to believe what I believe, I believe this psalm is a psalm of prophecy and maybe of the battle after the battle uh, Babylonian captivity. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people, the Jews, not America. Thou hast covered all their sins. Selah. When's that happen? Are you telling me that when Jesus Christ came, all the sins of the children of Israel were forgiven? I doubt it. I don't think so. That the fact is, it is not so. Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah 13. Verse 10 and 11. Let's see what happened during Nehemiah's time. I perceived that the portion of the Levites, well, that's of the children of Korah, Korah was of the Levites, had not been given them, and the Levites and the singers that did not did the work were fled everyone to his field. I contended, then contended I with the rulers, said, why is the house of God forsaken? You think God's going to forgive him for that? When the book of Haggai is written, the fact is, get back to work and build that temple? There's only one place in the scriptures where God speaks about the nation of Israel 
giving them a new heart and giving them a new covenant, and that's after the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ. Sila. Oh, there it is. The musical rest that will find the application of the second advent. Well, you know, so I don't believe that see you, you every time you say the second advent. Study it out. It comes awfully close to say it looks like it. I'll put wood, hay, or stubble on it. If I'm wrong, wood, hay, or stubble. If you're wrong, wood, hay, or stubble. Thou, God, has taken away all the wrath. So there is no tribulation period after Ezra and Nehemiah. What is the time of Jacob's trouble? That's the spanking on the rear end of the children of Israel for disobeying God all the ages. <laughs> listen, they're in the promised land, Ezra and Nehemiah. And, well, listen, stop building the temple. We're done. And God got to the point, you know what? He leaves them for 400, I believe it's 400 years between Malachi and the Gospels. And there's this silence. And then up comes Jesus Christ. He came on his own. And what's the scripture say? And his own received him not. And that they rejected their Messiah and they crucified their Messiah. And God has one great event for the church age, that's the rapture. And he has another great period called the, the tribulation. Seven years, three and a half years of great tribulation. Called to Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Jacob's trouble, Psalm 85 verse 1. I don't think the scholars have seen the real truth of the scriptures. Especially if you're going to read modern Bibles. You need to get out of the Greek and Hebrew and look at what the scriptures say in the English. The 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Many of the people of Americans don't care what the Greek and don't care what the Hebrew has to say. If they're going to have a trouble with the word, they're going to go to dictionary.com or they're going to open up the Webster's Merriam Dictionary or they're going to open up some form of a dictionary. what I do. I don't have nothing to do with Webster. I don't have nothing to do with Hebrew and Greek. I go to Webster when I got a problem. Sometimes I look up the word in the Bible. I get a concordance to find all the places the, that word is in the Bible. In most cases, the Bible will tell me what the definition of that word is. So that was taking away all the wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. Really? Really? Israel's in their land now, but they're not really a possession of that land. Especially the United Nations and the Middle East keep on getting much, keep on stealing their land. There are Jews today that will die and wake up in hell individually. Because they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the wrath and anger, John the Baptist, a Jewish man, said, He that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. So you can't apply Psalms 85 presently. Turn us. Return. Turn us. Repent. They need God to help them repent. O oh God of our salvation. And did we not see that? Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Did we not see that? Who is God's salvation according to name? 
Jesus, Jehovah saves. Majority of the Jews, many of the Jews, reject Jesus Christ. And there's some out there that have received Christ. Amen. And if you're looking at a period of time of Ezra and Nehemiah, when a Jew died, he didn't go right to glory. He went to Abraham's bosom. Until Christ suffered and died on the cross. Then their graves were opened. And caused thy anger towards us to see. Wait a minute. Verse 3 says the, the wrath and the anger stopped. Verse 4 says stop it. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? At the point of the second advent, that will stop the anger of God. The wrath of God upon the heathen, upon the Antichrist, upon the devil. After he will be chained up for a thousand years. Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? If a man is sitting on Ezra and Nehemiah's side of the captivity. Why would they say, is your anger forever? It must not, because here we are in the land. Look, we're building the temple. We stopped, but we're building the temple. That temple is no more there. 70 AD. Will thou not revive us again? Was not a reviving sort of in Ezra and Nehemiah? There's a reviving of the nation of Israel corporate coming again. When Jesus Christ comes. That thy people, the Jews, may rejoice in thee, God, Jesus Christ. That's what the whole thousand year millennial reign is. It is joy, it is rejoicing. There's the temple. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the priest, there's the Levites, there's the offerings. There is the celebrations, there is the feast, there is the greatness, there is the honor to God, there is the honor to Jesus Christ, there is the apostles, there is the Christians, there is the nation of Israel, there is his great joy. There was great joy when Ezra and Nehemiah, okay, but was there a great joy when the Messiah showed up? It wasn't great joy when, um, I'm trying to think, was he blind or was he, I think he was blind. He could, yeah, he's blind because he, where to get the lyrics of, I was blind, now I see. Here, here's a man, he's blind from birth. Great joy. Hallelujah, he can see. Jesus told him, go, go to the pool and, and wash himself. And I shall see. He, he hadn't seen Jesus yet. And he goes home and says, look, mom, it's me. Look, dad. Goes home to his people. Look, it's me. Well, it looks like your son that was begging. Because he had begged, he's blind. It looks like our son. Who... Mom, that's a beautiful white dress you got. White? Dad, I didn't think your hair would be so dark. Wow. Hey, who painted our house that ugly color? <laughs> oh, he can see. And they went to the, to the Pharisees to, to prescribe by the law and that, all right, this man can now see that a miracle has happened to this man. And the great joy in that his parents like, the fear of the Jews, the fear of the sin. Well, he's of age, answer him. Let him answer for himself because we don't want to be kicked out of the temple. Is that great joy? And the great joy did you hear what Jesus did? No, what did he do? He was in the temple on Sunday service, Saturday service, and he, he and he healed somebody. Got to kill that guy. Kill him. He he did something on the Sabbath. That wasn't great joy. 
It wasn't great joy when his disciples, 10 of them, were up in the upper room crying, boo-hooing, because their, their savior, their rabbi, their teacher, God, has been killed. And then in comes the women say, he's alive. We, an angel said he's risen. Ah, oh, you women are full of it. <laughs> sure. It wasn't great joy then. There's coming a time of great joy, but it hasn't happened yet. Show us thy mercy. After seven years of tribulation, three and a half years of great tribulation. That's going to be the mercy, God, please. You know, we used to play when we were a kid. Uh, we used to play games. We get each other headlocks. You know, we beat each other up and we, we sit on them and, and, you know, we just torment our friend. And today, cry, mercy, mercy, let go, stop it. That's what Israel's going to be doing, oh Lord. And grant us thy salvation. What is the name of Jesus? Jehovah saves. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God's amongst us. There was no saving of God from Ezra until the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. If you did what you're supposed to do, prescribed by the law and everything, okay. You didn't go to heaven when you died. You went to Abraham's bosom. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. All right. Let's try this one. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You want to go to stop any thousand Jewish people in Israel? Tell you what we'll do. We'll get you an airplane. We'll fly over Israel. And when you say, okay, I'm ready, we'll parachute you out of Israel, uh, out of the airplane and into Israel, wherever you land. And you stop the next thousand people and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Hey, believe and say it in Hebrew. Say it in Aramaic. Say it in English. Say it in whatever language you come across the person. Do you think they're going to hear what God has to say? Well, Paul said it. Yeah, Paul said it under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You do believe that God wrote the Bible. So if God wrote the Bible and the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible, then when Paul says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved, that's by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, put that in the Bible. For he will speak peace unto his people. Is he speaking peace unto them now? Did not Jesus say peace? And was it not on the, on the condition that what they would do with him if they would receive on him? What peace was there during Ezra and Nehemiah? Man, the enemies of Israel, they're going, hey, you know, they're building this rebellious city. Come on, Nehemiah, come, let's go somewhere over here. And, oh, no. You know, we'll have a meeting so we can kill you, but we'll have the secret meeting. Uh, and, oh, no. <laughs> Nehemiah's like, oh, no. That's, that sounds like a, a call by God. No. You go tell a Jew today, Orthodox Jew, that what he's doing right now today is completely wrong, and God has shut the door to the law. Think he's gonna listen? You think he's gonna jump up for joy? You can't even teach a born again Christian today what the Bible says and see them to do it. I know I'm dealing with Christians that won't do right, but when Jesus Christ comes, when Jesus Christ gives them that new heart and gives them that new spirit and gives them in that land as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, oh boy, they're gonna listen. Three times a year. Exactly. And they're going to pack their bags ahead of time and get there before it's time. <clears throat> For he will speak peace unto his people, Jewish people, and to his saints. Oh, 
Oh, that, that is a killer right there. To his people, the Jewish people, and the saints. That could be the Jewish people that are, are well and, and are doing what God pleases. But if you're looking at the millennium, who would be his people? Israel. Who would be his saints? There's the church with Israel, all in one good family. Now, I know that word and the conjunction that it is. But it says in Titus 2.13, God and Jesus Christ. That's one in one. Jehovah Witnesses will read that. Well, there's God and then there's Jesus over here. You know, it's here. Here's a jar of peanut butter, and here's a here's a jar of of, of jelly. They they're, they're separate. Sometimes that Anne puts the peanut butter and jelly puts it together. And I I can be wrong, but I can say that Anne here could be both ways. And I believe it is both ways. The people, Israel, and the saints, us. And I also can believe the people of Israel and the people of Israel who are saints. And you can't run off with a Catholic doctrine that saints are dead people that have been approved by the Pope. That's wrong. That's a lie. That's a heresy. I am a saint. And I ain't dead. Except for the flesh. I am well and alive. By Jesus Christ. And I'm called to be a saint. The Bible says, and it's so funny how you misinterpret the Bible, how you just take your traditions over the Bible. Say God, uh, something I'm, I'm not going to quote it complete, but you know, God loves the, the death of his saints. Or when his saints die. The Catholic Church saint says he's already dead. He died again. That's the second death. And those go into the lake of fire. Careful. You don't want to die twice. So I'm going to say the aspect of that, his people, Israel, <coughs> his saints, us, those are saved, and his people who are saints. There are Jewish people who are lost. They are God's people, but they are lost and going to go to hell. Saul was of Benjamin. He was of God's people, and he was lost and went into hell. But let them not turn again to folly. You say, what are you going to do with that with the millennium? People can sin in the millennium. People are going to sin. There's a lake of fire down in the Dead Sea. And you will be judged. You will have the judgment of the church age say, given to the inheritance of their land, their cities. 20 cities, 10 cities, 5 cities. However God does it. And if that case is too hard, uh, the apostle that's over that land, you'll have to say, come, uh, apostle, I'll just say James. Pick out a name. James. Yes, sir. It's Brother Hayward. I got this controversy over here. I, I've heard it out, and I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, I'll hear it. Also, James said, you know what? This is a very serious matter. It is, sir? Yes, it is. I think we need to bring this right to Jesus himself. Okay, let's go. Jesus, we got this case. Yeah, I've heard this case. Uh, the, the mayor of, of that city, Stiley, said, probably a new name, but to say, Stiley said, these, 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 these two people, and I, I've heard the case, and I think it's very severe. Jesus, you're the king of kings. You're the Lord. You know, the king's in the Bible, were judges along with the priest. You know, one of the jobs of the kings was to judge. There's no judgment given to, to presidents in the Bible. Presidents are of the city of Babylon. Yes, you don't know your Bible. And Jesus Christ will judge and find him at fault. And it's a serious fault. Go jump in the lake. You believe that? Yes, I believe that. And there's a, there's a thing not to do the folly. Listen, when when the when the millennium's over, Satan's going to be losing. He's going to find I don't know how many, but many, 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 maybe one more, many. Make sure people are going to try to go against Jesus, the apostles, and the Christians and the Jews again. 
And God, you're going, that's it, I've had it. Surely his salvation. Who is God's salvation? It's Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves. Is nigh them that fear him. All right. How many years was it from Ezra and Nehemiah to Jesus Christ showing up as a baby? Did that baby save Israel? No, it didn't. Any moment that Jesus Christ, let's say, uh, was it uh, John chapter 6? They pick up the stones, the cast at Jesus. Let's say they killed Jesus right then and there. Let's say it happened. I know it wasn't going to happen. It would not have happened. But let's say they killed Jesus Christ. Right there. Would he have saved them? Absolutely not. Would have been not the fulfillment of scriptures. He had to suffer and die and be risen from the grave three days and three nights according to the scripture. So we're not looking at Ezra and Nehemiah. We're looking at seven. We're looking at the destruction of ba by Babylon. We're looking at over Nehemiah. We're looking at the Messiah has been born and suffered and died according to the scripture. We're looking at the age of the church. Eh? We're looking at the rapture. The church is gone. We're at Jacob's trouble. And then Jesus gets up on a horse and says, "Let's go." Here comes the salvation. That's the salvation. And what's the New Testament say? Behold, Jesus cometh. Prepare. He comes as a thief of the night. I mean, Paul and, and all that speakers, Jesus is going to come back during their time. We're today. Jesus is coming. We're as close at the door. We don't really know that. But he's not. He's coming. Prepare. And there's some people, well, you know, he delays to come. He's not really going to come. And they're fools. That glory may dwell in our land. Who's the glory of God? Jesus Christ. What's the glory of God? Israel's right. Israel as a corporate body has been given a new heart and a new spirit. And they are doing what God wants them to do. That's God's glory. And what's the glory of God to them is they're living right and doing right. God had to send Haggai. Hey get them. You get down there and tell them to get back to work. Don't they see that? He, he says, listen, your tomatoes are not producing all the tomatoes. They're rotting. Why are they rotting? Because the house of God over there is rotting. You're bringing home money. Hey, I got paid. And you're, that money's being spent before you even get home. Why? Because the temple's not built yet. Mercy and truth are met together in Christ Jesus. Ain't no truth today. These people, oh, the media and the government. There's no truth in the media. There's no truth in the government. You look, you look oh, you know, my candidate, my, my, my Democrat, my Republican. That guy has lied to you since he's been out there campaigning. He has not done half the stuff he's told you he was going to do. And you're going to put faith in that idiot? Whether Republican or Democrat? You're an idiot for believing that. Then you're an idiot enough to vote for him back in office again. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Where can you find mercy? Where can you find truth? Where can you find righteousness? And where can you find peace? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Truth shall spring out of the earth. <laughs> How many different Bibles are on the market today that are not King James? How many pulpits are out there worldwide? Teaching nonsense and lies. How much fake news is there out there? How many stories of gossip is out there? There's coming a time in the moment it's going to be all true. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. God. You know, God's looking down from heaven today. You know what he sees? 
Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold, the evil first and the good. That don't match this verse here. Yea, that's what the devil said to start all the mess. Yea, has God said? The Lord shall give that which is good. All right, what is, what is that good? Nehemiah, Ezra? So Solomon's the one that wrote, there is none do that doeth good, no, not one. There's only one good that has come. That's Jesus Christ. There was no sin in him. We have the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. And our land shall yield her increase. And what period of time is that when the curse is removed? Israel too has desert land. Israel too has wilderness. Israel too have mountains that ain't doing nothing. Have we not read in the Psalms back? The wilderness is going to be flowing. The hills are going to have animals. And the mountains are going to be flourishing. And the trees are going to clap their hands. <laughs> trees are going to be clapping their hands. They're going to have so many apples. Oh, good. Thank you for coming. This thing's getting heavy. Oh, come on, Sal. You don't believe that. I, <laughs> I teeter totter on that one. Righteousness shall go before him. Here comes Jesus coming before God in the name of God, of Jehovah, shall set us, Israel, in the way. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, come on. Uh, let's see what Jesus said. Oh, come on. Uh, I am the, oh, I am the way. Oh, wait a minute. What else is I am the way, oh, oh, brain. I am the way, the, the, the truth. <gasps> wow. This was Psalms 85 teaches. The way, the truth, and the wonderful great life. Which shall set us in the way of his steps. And the Bible says when he comes back, those steps are going to be stepping on the enemy. The blood is going to be flying. It's going to go up to the, the horses, uh, whatever they call it, the feet. I forget the name. Rains. And we're going to pick up Israel. We're going to bring her home. Like Joshua said, go in there, get Rahab. Let's bring her home. And Rahab is named amongst the names of Jesus Christ. So I'm telling you right now, I believe what we just read. Psalms 85. It has not happened yet. It will happen. And I, as a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, as you as a born-again Christian, you're going to see it. You're not only going to see it, you're going to be behind the Lord all the way when we mount up and come back. 